Hello and welcome to Northern Fishing Talk. Um, once again, I'm your host, Kirk Backer, for this. Now, I have been saying I'm going to do a video for my boat. Uh, unfortunately, the video that I was going to do, I was trying to do it with my GoPro. There was a problem uh, last night uploading stuff, and basically, I lost everything. So I grabbed my other camera, and we're going to do it today. I've got my daughters helping me out. I've got my one daughter, Evelyn, behind that camera. I've got my other daughter, Juliana. She's going to be over there helping me. So here's the thing. I took this out for the long weekend uh, up here for Canada Day. Um, got to do a little bit of fishing, didn't catch anything other than we caught a perch and a snacking turtle. So really didn't get to catch anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a quick go through of the boat. So as you can see, I got a, a legend, a 15 angler like I, I have said before in the past, side console, I do have a windshield for it, it's just down here right now. Let me just grab that out. So I get to each time, you know, take it off, put it on. Um, I bought, um, well, my wife got me the tarp for the boat for when we do the long hauls. When we go to uh, short hauls with the lake, and that we, um, <coughs> excuse me, we don't uh, put on the tarp. We also have, the canopy for the top. Um, this is actually paid for itself already in my opinion. Especially when you have young kids, you're out on the lake and you have you know, a hot day. Shade's a premium out there. So this was definitely worth um, every dollar and that. So now we're gonna cut, I'm gonna get onto the boat here and we're gonna show you. Hello, um, so we talked about the boat down there. Now we're in the boat. So here's the thing. I like this boat, it's a great little boat, and um, so some of the features about it, like I said, it's the side console, you got the steering wheel, the motor is 25 horse Merc uh, four stroke, which I love to death, and we'll go more into that. Um, up here, we do have the spot for the windshield. We have the clips to clip it in. Yeah, the clips that go in, um, and that, and that's, that's kind of good, like I haven't really needed it yet, per se. But it's great to have, especially on those windy days. Um, so another thing that we have here, if the camera moves over here a bit, uh, a spot for the fish finder. Um, now the fish finder I have is a 197 hummingbird. Uh, and the hummingbirds are great little fish finders. Just not a big fan of the way it is, so I'm wanting to upgrade um, fish finders hopefully very soon in the near future. Um, hopefully to a Helix 5 or Helix 7, something like that. Now that being said, um, like I said, we got the tarp, uh, we got the, the canopy there that goes over top, or the bimmy as I'm being told it's called. So whatever you want to call it, it goes over. It's been great to have, especially on the really hot sunny days out on the lake with the kids. Just put it up and you can relax. I will admit it does cut down a, a bit on the casting content when you have so many people on there uh, and that. So you really take away your side casting. But luckily, there's enough floor space at the front and enough space at the back that you can still do some nice casting and that. Um, okay, so let's go to the bins here. Okay, so first off, the live well. Julie, you want to grab that? Yeah, one second. Yeah, no there problem. you go. Awesome. So it's a 54-gallon live well, I believe is what it is. I have to double check on that. Um, I've only used it a handful of times because I really haven't been out getting anything that's worth keeping in there. Uh, the first time that we took it out and the, and the kids caught uh, anything. I caught the biggest <laughs> rock bass. Yeah, um, we did put some water in there and just kept it there so we could get pictures afterwards. Over here is the battery box. There's nothing really fancy in there. It's just an open area waiting for the, the battery so we can hook a petroleum motor eventually. Now, here's the, the main thing. This is the big box. This is the big storage area. Julie, why don't you tell them what's in there? Okay, so our storage area is, mace, is basically filled with all our safety gear if we need anything, like if we hit a rock and we have to use the paddles, or if we end up having um, another person coming with us, we have extra life jackets, we have like other things and all that. Yeah, like so like she said, we keep extra paddles in there, we keep extra life jackets, all the safety gear, so like all your floating ropes, all that kind of stuff that's in there. Uh, the only thing I haven't put in that I'm going to be putting in this week is um, a first aid kit. 
and that. So, anyways, that is what we what we have in there. Also, too, I have some of my um, tackle some of my tackle boxes in there, and that as a just in case. Normally, I keep the one out with me that I use most of the time, and that that's in the back here right now, hidden with this tarp. Um, so, as I was saying about the motor earlier, the motor is a 25 horse Mercury four stroke. Really love it. I barely go through any fuel, um, and yeah, like I, it starts up first time every time. Not a, like I've heard people complain about Mercury's. I've heard people complain about Evan Roods. I think it's a personal preference. Um, I grew up with Johnson Motors. Johnson went out of business in 2002, so I ended up going with Mercury after that with any boat I rented and just love them. So, Juliana, why don't you tell them about some of the other stuff with the boat? Uh, well, some of the other features we have are like the coffee cups, we have four of them. Then we have like the seat thingies, which we have one right up here. We have another, one. we have the two ones, we have another two, and then we have one at the back. Yeah, so we can actually have six seats on this boat in total. Um, I've only got, only two came with the boat when I, when I bought it. Um, I do want to get more. Uh, we'll end up getting more and uh, that's just down the road but overall it's a great little boat um, if you are if you do have a boat and that just remember a few key things having all your safety equipment no drinking boat um, I still know a lot of people that do that that's not good I, if I've got people on, on my boat and they're having a beer I got no problem I'm not gonna have it while I'm driving uh, but um, we do have a lot of problems and accidents up here due to carelessness and people drinking and boating when they shouldn't. Um, another thing is contamination of lakes. Because Canada has so many great lakes to fish and that the one thing I'm a firm believer in is between each lake to wash your boat off. Uh, we take this to Cook's Bay quite a bit. We went up to North Bay. I cleaned it off before we went. We were in Nipissing, uh, we went to Nipissing and uh, between Nipissing and Trout Lake. I cleaned it, we went to Trout Lake, um, had a, one heck of a rainstorm. That actually cleaned the boat for me and that which was great that I didn't have to do it. Then we went out onto Nazbazine and I haven't um, cleaned it since Nazbazine because we, it's the last lake we were on. Before I take it out I will be cleaning it again just to make sure that we're not bringing in stuff that we shouldn't because that's the key thing, right? Uh, certain plants, if they get into the lake, can end up basically killing the lake and any chance of having fish in that lake. So let's do what we can. And especially if you're going from the Great Lakes to the smaller lakes, we've got all those zebra mussels and stuff like that. Let's let's honestly, let's make sure our lakes stay clean, uh, clean and great. Um, so yeah, like I said, as you can see, um, it's in my garage, and that's where I keep it most of the time. Um, right now the tarp's covering uh, the rod holder here, and I've probably mentioned this before, but if I haven't, I'm not a big fan of it. It wasn't a deal breaker for me on buying the boat, but I would have liked to have had a locker or something that I could actually fit a lot more of my rods in. I've got spot for three. The two b bottom spots are meant for like two-piece rods where you break them down, you put them in there, and then you fit your one-piece rods up there. Well, I, all my bait casting rods, except for one, I think, are one-piece rods. Um, so I, I like to have that, but I mean, it was, like I said, it wasn't a deal breaker for me. Um, and because I, I normally do a lot of finesse fishing, so I a lot, do a lot with spinning reels as opposed to bait casting. Uh, this summer I've been getting into more fishing with my bait caster, so I want to take my bait casters out, and I like to have the room. Uh, speaking of bait casting, though, Juliana here, she actually started to learn how to um, use a bait caster this past weekend. She did amazing. For, she only had it in her hand for like two or three casts and was like getting it down. She had one backlash the whole time, and that wasn't bad at all. And that, um, so we we're gonna end up getting her one too um eventually uh, we got to go out i know we were at bass pro yesterday probably should have picked up one there we also 
um, gave a photo, I mean, not a photo, but a video to my uncle saying that I can use it, but he can't. Yeah, my, uh, my uncle has a hard time, uh, <laughs> Using a bait casting reel. Uh, the one thing I found though with bait casters, if you're new to them, they're very hard to set up. They're one of those things that like, you, it'll just click on how to set it up. Uh, with me, what I did is I went on YouTube, and YouTube has a lot of great videos. But if you're wanting to know how to set up your bait casting reel to to really work it for a first time bait caster. There's a guy named Andrew Flair. He has a show called uh, Fishing with Flair. Um, our uh, Andrew Flair Outdoors is, an, I believe, might be the actual name of his channel. Anyways, if you look him up, he's on YouTube. I watch all of his stuff. I subscribe to his videos. Man, I shouldn't say. Well, he is a man, but he's still a young guy, and he's got a wealth of knowledge already. So a lot of these guys like that, I, I watch. Um, John B. from Fishing the Midwest. Another guy, A.P. Basson. Um, I watch him mainly because when he misses a fish and freaks out, it's hilarious. And then I get a good laugh at it. But these these are young guys, probably 10 years, well, probably more than 10 years younger than me, um, that have a wealth of knowledge. And it was actually Andrew Flair, uh, his one video about how to set it up if you're a first time user. That's how I set them up, and that's how I like to keep them now. I, I don't lose fish with them or anything like that. It's just it's a great way of using it. And especially for kids that are just starting to learn how to use it, that was great for my daughter. And so like when we get a rod for her to have it all set up, we're going to be doing it the same way. Um, but So this is going to be the end of the video. Um, I know it, it wasn't the greatest because I still have the tarp on, but I'm finishing getting the boat together so we can take it out again. Um, and I gotta have the tarp on for the for the drive, so just wanted to get that ready. But I figured I'd give you guys a quick overview of the boat. Um, next videos that are coming up, we're gonna be doing a tips and tricks video. Um, of how to use like rods and all yeah. that with good tackle. Well, with certain fish. Yeah, like uh, we're gonna go. I'm gonna go through it, and I'm gonna give you like what type of spinning rod and reel I use mostly. Um, what type of tackle I use with it. For certain situations, and then uh, what I use with my bait casting rods, and that. So, anyways, uh, thank you once again for watching uh, Northern Fishing Talk. Um, more videos to come, and thank you to my little ones for helping me out with this. And remember, take a kid fishing. Yeah.